In this tutorial, we are going to get started using DSP Explorer. We will see how to create a play space and write our first program, which will be a simple sine wave signal generator. Once we have the signal generator running, we will examine the signal using several views provided by DSP Explorer's oscilloscope function. We will then learn how to use multiple instances of the same module and how to modify the instances to provide for independent operation. Let's get started. As you can see, I've already downloaded DSP Explorer to my desktop. I'm using a Mac, but the operation should be the same on a Windows machine. Remember that DSP Explorer requires that you have already installed the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. If you have not yet installed the JRE, please do so before proceeding. When we run DSP Explorer for the first time, it requires that we create a play space. So I invoke DSP Explorer simply by double clicking on it. Here, I need to create a play space since I don't already have one. So I'm going to say DSP play space. It says it created it. And now we can get started. To create our first module, we simply select module and new. It asks us for a name and I'm going to say SIGGEN. We write our program by typing in this pane. When we run the simulation, DXP Explorer will call this routine repeatedly, and each time the routine is called, we will want to output the next value of the sine wave. Let's call this variable phase. We'll declare a simple variable. When the program is compiled, phase will be initialized to zero. Then, each time the routine is called, we want to advance the phase. Let's advance it by 0.1 each time. Notice that as I'm typing, if there's an error in the program, DSP Explorer highlights the error and tells me down below what it expected. In this case, it expects a value, so we'll type 0.1. Now the error goes away. Of course, we want an output in this, which is a sine wave. So we're going to declare an output, output, double, i, because we make this the in phase signal. And we're going to say that it's the cosine of phase. Now, under normal circumstances, I go ahead and put in all the signals that I think might be used in the future. I don't have to use them, but if they're there, I can. In which case, I'm going to output the Q signal. And I often want to deal with the combination, I and Q together, so I'm going to make one more output. And I'm going to create a complex variable using I and Q. You'll see this construct repeatedly. Don't get confused by it. Just Now let's run this program. First thing I'm going to do is select a trigger. And I'm going to go ahead and trigger on I. And I'm going to move this signal up to the top. And I want to also look at some other signals. Let's go ahead and look at Q. Notice that in this case it put the variable name on the right. The variable name is on the left, it's a trigger variable. If it's on the right, it's just being displayed. Now we can go ahead and run this program. We'll call it simulation, run, and there are our signals. They're a little big, so I'm going to come up here and reduce their scale so that I can see them easily on my screen. This gives me an opportunity. Notice when I click on the signal name, the traces are highlighted. And notice that signal generator here is a complex signal, and I see I and Q. If I move this up and down, you'll see that SIGGEN 
the real part, which is solid, looks like I. I get the scale the same. And the imaginary part looks like Q. Now, these are signals in the time domain. We can, of course, look at signals in the frequency domain, and let's do that now. Let's look at signal gener SIGGEN Q as a frequency. You can see that it has two little blips here. Let me change the scale so that it can be seen. This happens because SIGGEN is a simple signal, a real signal, if you will. SIGGEN S, of course, is a complex signal. It has both I and Q in it. And if I look at the magnitude of that signal, we'll see one peak. Pretty much as we expected. Now there's a few more interesting little things we can see while we're sitting here. Let me get rid of uh, these two signals. Okay, so let's look at the signal in a couple of different ways. Um, we'll add it down here so we can play with it while keeping our trigger. And let's look at it in the frequency domain. Scale it up so we can see it. You can see here the real part and the imaginary part of the FFT. It's a little hard to recognize at times, but if we change this to bars, it's a little more visible. Again, the imaginary part and the real part of the FFT, and we'll notice that those will change as I change the trigger threshold. What I'm doing is changing the phase of the signal, and you'll see the real part get smaller and the imaginary part get bigger, and vice versa. If you want to just view the signal as a magnitude and phase, we can change this signal to be viewed as magnitude and phase. And if we want to look at the phase, it's complex. And as you can see, the phase jitters all over the place. And this is a common problem with FFTs when the signals tend to get small. You can see the magnitude is getting small over here. And when the magnitude gets small, the phase starts to jitter significantly. If you look closely in here where the magnitude is fairly large, we don't see a lot of jitter on the phase. This is a known problem with FFTs. It's not really a, a problem with DXP Explorer uniquely. Now suppose we want two copies of the same, I'm going to delete this because it's bugging me, two copies of the same module. We can add another copy of the module simply by doing an add of the signal generator. And now we have two copies. And these two copies share the same source code. So if I come up here and I make put an error in here, you'll see that I get an error. And that both blocks have an error indication in them. This makes it tough to have two signal generators with different frequencies. And so DSP Explorer provides a mechanism called parameterization. I'm going to add a parameter which I'll call the increment, and I'm going to give it an initial value of 0.1. And notice now over here on the schematic side, the modules have a parameter that I can change. Let me change this one to be 2. And over here in my text, I want to increment by that amount. And now if I say simulation, run. Let me add the other signal. We can see that the two signal generators are producing signals of different frequencies. In this tutorial we have seen how to invoke DSP Explorer and create a play space. We then wrote a simple sine wave generator and ran it. We examined the signals in both time and frequency.
We then learned how to add a second copy of the same module and how to parameterize that module so that different instances can operate in different ways. In our next tutorial, we will expand the capabilities of SIGGEN and start doing some real DSP processing.